Welcome to episode four of the Tech Manitoba education series on basic computer skills. In this episode, we're going to look at some of the features that you can customize, where information is stored, and how to start up programs. We're back at our desktop and we're going to explore some options. I've mentioned that there's often more than one way to accomplish the same task. Well, let's look at some examples of that. We've already used the software in Microsoft Word in our last episode when looking at the keyboard. The question is, where can we find it so we can open it up again? Look down at the taskbar at the bottom of the screen and you'll see that there is space that says type here to search. Move your mouse into that area and left click once. You should see the blinking cursor. Type W-O-R-D. If you look now, the search area expanded and has several options available for you. If you simply press the enter key on the keyboard, the program Microsoft Word will start up. If you want, you could simply do that each time you want to start a program. But for programs you will likely use all the time, let's make it even easier. You'll see the link called Pin to Taskbar. Move your mouse and position the cursor over the words Pin to Taskbar and left click once. An icon with a big W should have been added to the taskbar along the bottom of the screen. If you hover the cursor over the W icon for one second, an image will show you a tiny Microsoft Word page. Left click once on the icon and Microsoft Word will open a new blank page. That icon will stay there even after you close the Word program. Next time, all you have to do is click on the W and Word will open right away. Do this for any programs you use all the time. There are lots of different ways to do tasks on the computer and as you become more familiar, you'll find the best way for you. Some people find that the icons and the windows are too small and difficult to see. There are ways to make them larger to accommodate your eyesight. Move your mouse on the desktop to a blue-green area, hold the mouse still and right-click. You get a list of items in a drop-down menu. You can now use your left mouse to click on options. We want to click on display setting. You see the screen is divided in a blue section on the left and the corresponding white section on the right. Display is selected on the left, so I see the choices for my computer display on the right. If I click on the right side, I'm going to look for scale and layout. You can see that it's now at 100%. How would my screen look at 125%? How about 150%? You can set it where you find it comfortable. Let's look at some other options while we're here. If we highlight sound on the left pane, we see the options. For master volume, make sure it's set at 100%. Click and hold and move the slider scale to the far right. If this is too loud, just slide the bar until you have the desired level. This can be changed at any time. In the left pane, highlight power and sleep. This is where you can choose when your computer goes to sleep. Some people always shut off their computer, while others just let them quiet down and go to sleep. Tech experts can't seem to agree which method is better and saves more electricity. I'll let you decide for yourself. Storage. This is interesting to look at because it shows you how much storage you have on your computer. A gigabyte is a billion bytes or characters, really. Imagine 500 very large novels. That would be one gigabyte of text. Let's go back to our desktop again. Maybe you want the icons even larger. So right click once again on a blue green area of the desktop. And the first choice you see is view. Let's try large icons. If you prefer this, leave it. If not, right click and make a different choice. Let's have some fun. Right click again on the desktop. Now left click on personalize. You can change your background from the default one to some lovely pictures or a solid color. I'll make a few choices and you can see the results. I'm going to choose a scenery picture but I find it way too bright. Now let's try a solid color. I'll choose a light pink. Again, way too bright. I'm going back to the background I started with. 
In future episodes, we'll look at importing your own pictures and you can make one of those photos your background if you want. For now, this will do fine. Now let's explore the icon called This PC. It will show us what is on this personal computer. Double click on the icon and a window appears that shows us what is on this computer. The first thing is to look at the top right corner. You have the same three options on every window now. Minimize, maximize, and close. Let me demo them. Minimize keeps the window open but sends it to the taskbar to wait. Maximize makes the window as large as the screen so I'm not seeing the background. If I click that button again, it restores it to its original size. If you move your pointer to the bottom right hand corner of the window, left click and hold the mouse button, then you can drag the window bigger and smaller to the exact size you want. In the This PC window, notice a section called Devices and Drives. It has two in brackets. This view shows us any storage devices available. We just looked at how much space is left on our local disk called the C drive. This is standard for all computers. What they're referring to is the actual hard metal disk that is located inside your CPU. This disk is where data is kept. The drive labeled the D drive is where you'd put a compact disk or DVD into the computer. To insert a CD or DVD, you simply push the black button in front of your CPU. Place the disk into the tray so that it sits properly and press the button again. Wait a little while, you'll likely hear some noises as the disc starts to spin. If there's information on the disc already, you'll be prompted with choices of what you want to do next. You can see there are seven folders on your computer. These folders were automatically made by Windows. They're called default folders. You can add some of your own later, but for now, let's look at each one of these. 3D Objects is to hold 3D items that you create with a program called Paint 3D. Going left to right, the next is Desktop. This folder has the items that are on the main desktop screen. Documents holds any documents that you will create. Programs like Microsoft Word normally save to this folder unless you tell it to save somewhere else. Downloads holds any items that you copy from an email or a web page on the internet. Music will hold your music files. Windows Media Player is the default program and this is where it looks first for music files. Pictures is where photos and images are saved and organized by default. You'll see some photos already in this folder. Videos folder will hold and organize videos. Windows Media Player is the default program and this is where it looks first for video files. Have you noticed they are in alphabetical order? Numbers always come before letters in a filing system and that's why 3D is first. Think of these folders exactly like folders or storage that you would have at home. You have file folders in your filing cabinet for different bills you need to pay or for certificates and your children's report cards perhaps. You might have a file folder for each person in your home. You might have a box with your photos. You might have another box that holds your DVDs. Uh, you might still have CDs with music that you keep all together in a cabinet. So your physical items at home are collected and sorted by category. And Windows does the same with your electronic files. It wants you to be organized and store all photos together and all text documents in a documents folder. Now look in the left pane. We see that this PC is what is highlighted. Again, we have seven folders and two devices. Look up at the white address bar. It shows me that I'm looking at this PC. Now, if I double click on my documents, notice how it changes to show me that I'm looking at this PC and in the folder called documents. I can see that I have several documents. If you look in the left pane, you'll see quick access. This shows me exactly the same thing as the icons do. Windows is what they call user-friendly. So they've made many things in many places, so it's easy for you to locate and to see things in words or visually. The icons have pictures so that even if you didn't read, the image would guide you along. Let's close that and see this window in another way. On the taskbar at the bottom of your screen is a tiny yellow folder. Clicking on it will open essentially the same window. I'm gonna look in my documents again. I decide that I don't need this file any longer. I want to delete it. To do this, I'm going to click on it once. 
If I should happen to accidentally double click, then it would open it. But you know how to close it with the top right X, right? So by clicking it only once, I've selected it. Now I want to delete it. Before I do this, please look at the recycle bin on your desktop. It shows that it's empty. Remember I said that this is just like a physical, real desktop. So you might not have your recycle bin on your desk, probably under or beside it, but in Windows, it's on the desktop. To throw my document in the recycle bin, just hit delete key on your keyboard. Notice the recycle bin now. The icons change to show that it has something in it. Let's go look. Double click to open it and voila, there is my file. So when you delete a file, it really isn't deleted, it's in the recycle bin, just like at home. Until you pick up the bin and physically take it to your blue bin in the back lane and empty it, you can always retrieve it. Once it's gone with the garbage pickup, it's gone. So right click on the window. Now remember, right clicks are your friends, they give you choices. I can undo this delete and put the file back in the folder, or I can empty the recycle bin. If I do this, it's gone for good. Let's put it back. Before we do this, I'd like you to notice something. Windows is showing us that there's a keyboard shortcut to do this action, and it's by holding the control key and the letter Z. This is probably the one shortcut that you should memorize. It lets you undo the last thing that you just did. How can you memorize the Z? Well, think of when you erase something on a board, the action that you use is usually like a Z. You might not see the value in shortcuts now, but as you use the computer and the programs more, you'll thank me for Control Z to undo. Let's click on the Windows button in the bottom left corner of the screen. The list of programs on your computer are along the left side. Let's explore what the calculator does. Just like you probably would have a calculator on your desk, you have one on your computer. We're looking at a standard calculator. So, 5 times 8 equals 40. To clear, hit the letter C. Use it like you would a standard calculator. 900 divided by 5 equals 180. This calculator has an added bonus. It has a converter section that's fun and useful to use. Look at the categories and try it out. If I look at length, 12 inches, it's equal to roughly 30 centimeters or one foot. Very handy, right? It may feel a little overwhelming to remember all these folders. So Windows has a great feature called search. You just need to know what you're looking for and enter it into the search bar in the bottom left corner of the desktop. Let's try an example. Somewhere in these folders is a collection of games to play. Move the pointer into the search window and left click once. Type the word solitaire, S-O-L-I-T-A-I-R-E. The search window will expand and you should see Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Use your mouse to move the pointer over those words and left click once to start the program. I'm gonna choose first classic solitaire game called Klondike. You move the cards by clicking and dragging, and aces you can send to the top by double-clicking. This game is fun, but it will also really help you to improve your mouse skills. Click, drag, double-click. There's so much to explore and learn on your computer. Don't be scared. Spend some time opening folders and seeing what's available. Play a game to practice your mouse skills. And when you're ready to learn more, join us on the next episode where we use the program Microsoft Word to format a document.